So, David, this is the camera I think you're after, because it's got this nice back here, look. So you can see. Oh, yeah, great. That's dinky, isn't it? My, my, my real thing is, is that I, I always use the Fuji cameras, the, the X-Pro one, but I've all, all my life just used two lenses, a 28 and a 50. Mm -hmm. And I have one on each body, so I mm -hmm. carry two bodies. Yeah. And I've got to the age where I, I, I just don't want to walk around Tesco's with a camera bag <laughs> over my shoulder. And, and yet I, I hate the idea of not having a camera with yeah, me. Yeah. And so I read about this one, which is sort of a compromise between the, the 50 yeah. and the 28. As it's 35 mil. And uh, the, the problem is that I've, had, I've got 60 years of muscle memory mm -hmm. on the 35 and the 28. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, got a fear that when I shoot with the 35, I'm going to be cropping all my pictures <laughs> all of it because I can't get rid of the... So anyway, so I wanted to try to get... But okay. you can't get the damn thing. Yeah, I've heard that. I've, it, I've it, gathered it, they've uh, stopped making them. No, I know. Exactly. Why do they do that when it's a very popular camera? Well, it's puzzling. Yeah. Uh, but Fuji have always been a bit puzzling. I, I mean, they've, they've made some really bizarre cameras and then suddenly made some very good ones. Mm -hmm. But they've all got too many buttons on them. I know, yeah. And I, I keep pressing the buttons. I don't know how to use a flash on this, for example. No, which know. is silly, isn't it? No, yeah, absolutely. Because I like that. But I do like uh, this screen. Yeah, yeah. And well, you can tilt I, it. Look. I, again, it, it's great for me because I, I love, the as you do, the pictures of mm -hmm. Sergio Lorraine. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking at them, and it's amazing how many uh, down from a, the a, from the ground from very low. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if I have this, I can pretend I'm Sergio Loren, <laughs> and and so I can walk around with this attached <laughs> to my knee or something, <laughs> and maybe with a, <laughs> an extra yeah, take absolutely. Sergio Loren pictures. Yes. Yeah. Good. So all I need is a big flash on here, and I can take mm -hmm. pictures like you. <laughs> um, and there we go. Yeah. What's your favourite camera you've ever used, David? I, I think the one I've got at the moment I like, which is the Fuji X-Pro 2. They, uh, I saw a 3, which I thought was awful. They, they, I mean, the X-Pro 2 has a lovely viewfinder on it. And, and the beauty is it has a viewfinder like a Leica. In other words, it's an etch viewfinder, which I like, because it means you can see what's coming in the sides, whereas most of the other cameras are, are on an etch, you only see in one plane, and you don't see the background. Whereas if you have, like, what is the Leica-type viewfinder, you see the background, plus you see, you see what's around the outside of the frame. And so when they switched to digital, I would have switched to it like I uh, Not only did they make a lousy camera, um, but uh, it, I mean, it's ludicrously expensive, you, you, you know. And then Fuji, very cleverly, I think, brought out the camera with more or less the same, in fact, in my opinion, a better viewfinder than the Leica, because it, whatever lens you put on it, it whereas a Leica, you pay 6,000 quid for the camera, and then if you <laughs> want to use a 28, lens you have to have a, a separate little mm -hmm. flipping viewfinder you stick on yep. the top you yep. know as, as though you were sort of a victorian master you you know roger fenton or something with mm -hmm. um and um so uh, so i, I so the the, the the fuji hundred to me is, is wonderful it's been wonderful and never gone wrong and and uh, because i have the 28 on one and the 50 on another. I never get any problem with dust because I never take the lenses off. Um, and I just, I have a little yellow tab on the top of one and a red tab on the other. So that if they're around my neck, I, I pick up the right camera, you, you know. Um, but at this, I think- And do you shoot on automatic? I shoot everything on automatic. Yep, me too. I, 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 and I, it, I have Lightroom, which you have, do you? I don't even know because remember oh, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't even process <laughs> files. What's your favourite camera, Martin? Is it the five D four? I guess I like the five D. I mean, it's it's served me very well, and I've grown up from five D, two to five, and now to the mirrorless. So, um, yeah, it's it's like a, you know you keep coming back, and when they bring out a new one, I just get it. You 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 had this. You've got this new mirrorless, the Canon yes. mirrorless, but that's very small. 
It's smaller and lighter, yes. Yeah, I look. And I've that, got the but new. I um... couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have to be very rich to buy the new, well, latest. Well, to be honest, Canon. I got mine free from Canon. Oh, did you? Oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Canon. I do appreciate <laughs> this. You. But then do you have to change all the lenses? No, uh, I just bought a new 2470, which is even sharper and faster uh, and more wonderful than oh, the yeah. other one. Oh. Yeah. Really? And, that, yeah. and that's the only one you had to do? Well, I, yeah. I can't be yeah. bothered. To, no, no. I just use a 2470. Yeah, yeah. So does George. <laughs> oh, George, you know, you and I, mate. <laughs> but you like the prime lens, right? I, you've I never, like you've never, so, you've so never was, zoomed in your so life, So I was you? looking at the, that Canon with a, a 16 millimeter at one end. Mm -hmm. A 16, a 28, and a 50 would have done me well mm -hmm. on that. 16 is horrendously wide, though, isn't it? Well, that's because I'm doing this landscape thing. And okay. If you do landscape, you have to get up at 4:30 in the morning and take <laughs> pictures with wide-angle lenses. Right. Oh, is that the rules? Yeah. Well, that's what. Okay. Uh, John Cor Cornwell, or whatever his name is, uh, uh, who's a very good landscape photographer. Right. And Charlie Waite, they both told They all me, get up early. Yeah, get up early. Okay. And, uh, right. So that's the secret. Yeah, absolutely. And good shoes, like? And like good you, shoes. Good, like you've good got shoes. good shoes on. Very good shoes. Yeah. How long have you guys been friends for? Um, oh, quite a while now, isn't it, David? I, I think I bought the first picture that Martin ever sold. Mm-hmm which was at the Arnolfini, mm -hmm. and he had his show, I think it was called Home Sweet Home, Correct. if I remember. Yeah, see, my, yeah, very my good. mind is not totally yeah, gone. Yeah. And, um, and it, I just loved it. I, I mean, because the whole, he made a whole bloody, as always, a whole room, you know, which was like a lovely suburban room, and, and all these little pictures with, Woolworth frames and things. I mean, it was just so inventive and, and so charming. And I, I think you're right. It was the first one. And did that did that picture go to the um, Cardiff Museum? Yes, it did. There you go. And 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 so it's in a box there, never to be seen again. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the mu museums have this habit that they collect prints. Yeah. They put it in their sort of accounts thing for the year to say, oh, we have this, uh, we've acquired these prints, and then they promptly put them in a box in the basement. Yes. And then uh, when I returned from Ireland in 1982, uh, I think I wrote to you and said, uh, is there any part-time teaching going? Yes. And you wrote back and said, yes. And um, off we went. Off and I was two or three years working at uh, Newport, Newport, which of course yeah. is very interesting. Which was lovely. And, yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, when you look at the people that we used there as you know yourself, Joseph came and stayed with me every winter. He, he would That's Kadelka, by the way, folks. Kadelka, yeah, yeah. He would show, he would shoot during the summer, and then he would come and stay for the whole bloody winter. He did that for 11 years, can you imagine that? And, and then he'd come in and make all this. And I persuaded him for nothing to come into the college. And, of course, he would develop his film there and I could you imagine what that did for students? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there they are developing their film, and and Kudelka's developing his <laughs> film in the same mm -hmm. liquid. You, you know, they don't have excuses to not have good negatives, uh, and um, and that was wonderful. And then there was him, and then there was Martin, Jurgen, Jurgen, um, occasionally John Benton Harris, who sadly just died. Um, I think he came down just twice or something, but uh, but w everybody we had there was practicing professional photographers at a level that they didn't die of malnutrition, basically. <laughs> um, and 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 that was, I, I suppose, in many ways, the key to the thing. Uh, I mean, if you have people that pass, that have genuine experience to pass on, and if you have keen students who want to learn, that combination of the passion of learning and swapping it with experience, you have to do a lot wrong not to get it right, you, 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 you know, which we did. Uh, and, it, and it worked for the, the time that I was there and I enjoyed it. And when you were teaching, you yeah. obviously had less time to go out and photograph yourself. I, I didn't have that much less time. I mean, if I look at how little people seem to shoot pictures nowadays, you know, they all talk about all the bloody pictures. And I'm doing my in-depth subject this weekend, 
um, <laughs> sort of approach to photography. But uh, but no, no I, I, I mean, you have Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you had one day off a week. Mm -hmm. And as I was head of the college, I could make that for me Friday or Monday. Mm -hmm. So I had three solid days. Yeah. So if you actually want to go and shoot pictures and go out, you, you have half your time, which is as much as you would normally get because you normally got two days at home developing the yeah. film, which I, was, then, I could do in the dark room in any case. And then 10 weeks in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, uh, so, I mean, I, it didn't, I, I, shot, I, I shot there. I, could tell, I was published in Life magazine whilst I was there twice, the Sunday Times, etc. And again, I, I remember, I forget the name of the guy, a very good photographer who came. He, he said the thing that stunned him most was suddenly realising that I was talking to him and I had a layout in Life magazine. I, I, I mean, people tend to listen to what you have to say. They don't necessarily believe you or this and the other, but at least they listen. And at least they think, well, that's not a bad thing to try. You know, that guy does it. And, and it, it, you know, it's the same, you bring somebody like Martin in and he says something idiotic, <laughs> you know, and they're not quite sure whether they want to believe it. But then, then look, at, look at his pictures and say, hang on, he just said that. And that's what he does. Maybe it's worth frying. <laughs> and, and that, I think, is the essence of, yeah. of, of teaching. No, I remember with great fondness the, yeah. the, the days at, at Newport, looking through contact prints, because that really was the sort of uh, yeah, the core Absolutely. idea yeah. to the whole college, wasn't it? To yeah. the whole yeah. course. And, and, and that really came out of, in a way, Sergio. Mm -hmm. Because I met Sergio Lorraine, and he had just joined Magnum, which I'd never heard of at that mm -hmm. time. I, you know, I was just learning to shoot pictures. And he introduced me to John Hillson, who was the agent representing Magnum in London. He represented everybody, Vu and, uh, uh, you know, Raffo and all these various agencies. He represented, uh, and Magnum, you know, yep. who I've now heard of because Sergio told me about Magnum. And, and the beauty about that was that he had all the contact sheets. Mm -hmm. So I used to go down more or less, I would say twice a week it's, uh, to the office and I'd look through the contact sheets. Mm -hmm. And I would look through all Cartier Bresson's mm -hmm. contact sheets and Mark Weber's contact sheets and Benny Burrish's contact sheets. And what amazed me was that if you were flexible enough, you could realise that they all shot in the same way. They all didn't just go and shoot a single picture. In the main, they shot groups of pictures because they weren't arrogant enough to feel that <laughs> they could get it just in one shot. Yeah. So they would see a situation, get themselves maybe into the right geometry, and then look. And it's either going to improve or go... Yeah, or, 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 or just disappear. Or disappear, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I have two questions for you both, and then yep. you're free to disappear. Um, the first one is, what's each other's favourite photo? So what's your favourite Martin <laughs> Carr picture, and what's your favourite David Hearn picture? Well, I still love the Tenby picture, because yeah. um, we have a flat less than 300 yards away from where David took one of his uh, key pictures, and the picture is on the, on the cover of the new book, 1955 to 20... 22 and uh, you know you never tire of looking at it and you always marvel at everything you could not place them better within that frame you know so obviously it's a bit of luck that you've earned yeah. over all those years when that situation revealed itself yeah I often pass that cannon and, <laughs> and I think uh, if only there was something happening here I'd like to get a good picture but it never yeah. works yeah. Yeah. Uh, Surprisingly, it's not a picture that I suspect anybody else will remember, but the picture that I kind of like, because I just think it's, again, so perfect, it's of a group of maybe about five women who are out, I don't know where, but they're out on the street. I'm presuming they're slightly drunk because they're very effervescent and... and, and and just every single one of the five. Oh, I know. I know the one in the. It's taken at night. Taken at night. Yep, yep. And and 
I just look at that picture, you know, every so often and think, God, that's so perfect. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you suddenly realize that it is, it is possible to get great pictures if you work hard enough. I mean, most of the time people take lousy pictures, but most of the pictures they take which are lousy are because they don't work hard enough. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, you know, I can imagine Martin there at that situation. He's going to now tell me I'm bullshit. But I can imagine working that evening and working mm -hmm. and working and working it, you know. And out of that evening, he probably has three pictures he quite likes. And one good one. And one really good one. And as Bresson once said, you know, if you get a dozen a year, mm -hmm. I remember actually, now I'm going to drop names. I was at a dinner with, uh, can you imagine this, Gene Smith, Bill Brandt, and Cartier Bresson, <laughs> in Cartier Bresson's home. <laughs> and Bresson, who was always uh, you know, mixing it up a little bit, said to Gene Smith, oh, Gene, now t tell us how many pictures you get a year, you think. And I think, and Gene Smith said something like, trying to be modest, you know, sort of said, oh, I only take about 12 pictures I really like a year. And Bresson said, you always exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. What's your favourite photography tip? Of your own. Oh. Do you have a favourite photography tip? Good shoes. <laughs> Getting closer. Getting there. Oh, that's it. That's it.